CataractCoach.com. Success with young cataract patients. This surgery must last at least 50 years. Here's how to ensure that. Now, preoperatively, looking at this picture, you can see there's a dense central nuclear sclerotic change, and that's causing some visual issues. Now, here's the surgery. The patient's going to have cataract surgery of this eye. Again, the patient is relatively myopic here. And so the lens power is going to be about a 7.5 diopter lens, and that's to achieve a post-op refractive result of about minus 1.5. And we'll talk about that refractive result too. Now, the beginning of the case, we're filling up our anterior chamber here with our dispersive viscoelastic. That's to protect that cone endothelium. Now, this is a critical part, the incision. Use a diamond keratome. You know it's the sharpest and it's the best. Barely nick those limbal vessels. Get a very good incision construction. That incision has to seal beautifully. Notice the little bit of bleeding from the limbal vessels. Ah, that's perfect. That means it's going to seal beautifully and seal forever. Now we're gonna poke in the lens capsule, and this lens capsule can be more elastic in this young age. This patient's about 40 years old. So now we're tearing the capsule axis, and this needs to be precise. You see my forceps, this is my design. They're marked off at two and a half and five millimeters from the tip, so that when you create this rexus, we can actually measure it out and make sure it is exactly that five millimeters that we want. And it's beautifully centered. So let's finish this up. I want it to be as perfect as possible. That looks great. And let's measure it. That's five millimeters. Now the lens is soft other than that dense central nuclear opalescent part. So hydrodissection easily separates the lens cortex. And then there, that hydrodelineation, look, that separates out that dense endonucleus. That central endonucleus, we carefully brought it up outside the capsule bag. We're going to use a bare minimum amount of ultrasonic energy, very little. If you keep track, the CDE, the total cumulative dissipated energy in this eye, is one second. So we use phaco modulations to minimize that. So it's a very tiny amount. The CDE on the machine is, is much less than one. And so now we can just aspirate that down pretty quickly. Now what's left? The endonucleus is already gone. That's just the epinuclear shell. Do you get it with the phaco probe? You can try a little bit, but the answer is no. Why? You can't take any risk, even a 1% or a 1 in a 1,000 risk. You can't take that risk in this eye. So going with this IA tip, look at the polymer tip of it. It's soft. It's much gentler. It'll take a little longer to remove the lens nucleus, but I'm in no rush. I want to do this case as meticulous as I can. I need a beautiful, beautiful outcome. So we're taking all the lens cortex nice and easy, moving it all around, and we'll clean this capsule bag up beautifully. Now in terms of refractive outcome, what do you choose here? Now, the patient absolutely wants the best visual quality. No compromise and contrast, no rings or glare or halo at night. You don't want any of that. So that obviously leads you to a monofocal lens. So the monofocal lens, now the option is what do you aim for? Do you aim for absolute plano, which is far distance vision? Well, it depends on what the patient does for a living. If the patient is a professional football player, throws a football for a living, or drives a truck for a living, needs to see... 300 meters down the road, okay, I get it, aim for a distance. But for most of us, how do you spend your time? Now this person, without giving away too much, spends a lot of time up close activities, reading, using a computer, these type of things, things that you do too, cell phone use. So in that situation, we want to aim for myopia, a mild degree, minus one and a half. Now as you know, minus one and a half gives an optimal focal point of 67 centimeters from the face, but it gives a wide range, probably much more than that, maybe 40 centimeters to even a couple of meters away. So it'll be a very nice broad range of vision that's very useful. Now in the patient's other eye, the cataract's not so much, and the patient won't need surgery in that other eye. We're leaving some significant anisometropia between the two eyes, but the patient can wear a contact lens in the other eye. Now, the other eye doesn't have zero cataract, and at some point in the future, that other eye will need surgery as well. You know, it's funny, if you talk to a lot of ophthalmologists, me included, and you say, what would you want for your eye surgery in the future? Well, I'd also choose a monofocal lens with the best visual quality, and I'd also choose to retain a mild degree of post-op myopia, because like you, my world is up close, and 
I don't mind wearing glasses to drive a car or watch TV or go for a hike or play sports. I can even wear contacts for those, but I want to be able to see up close and do computer work and read and use my cell phone without glasses. Now here at the end, you can see the lens in beautiful position. We're fixing that reverse pupillary block, very common in myopic eyes. And look at the rexus overlap, beautiful. That is a five millimeter caps rexus overlapping that optic very precisely. 360 degree overlap, that is what you want. Remember what I told you, what's your signature? Your incision and your caps rexus are the incision that everyone will see for the rest of this patient's life. And now, when anyone looks at this eye, I am super proud to say, yeah, I did that rexus and I did that incision, and that is a beautiful outcome. Lens is perfectly centered. Now, at the end here, look what we're going to do. Whoa, what is that? Triamcinolone, preservative-free. A little bit of steroid there to help quell any post-op inflammation. We're going to put a little bit of more BSS, and then finally at the end here, some preservative-free moxifloxacin. So all that goes intracameral as well and that's gonna just help ensure we have a beautiful post-op outcome. Now, we're not quite done yet. The patient has a small degree of astigmatism, steep at about 90 degrees, only about a half diopter's worth. So that's a sponge soaked in tetracaine right there. Get a little anesthetic going on. Make sure the eye's nice and numb. Here's that fixation ring, lining it up at the 90 degree meridian. We're gonna do a very small LRI arc right there. Beautiful. Let's switch hands and flip that around, and we'll do a matching one here, and that should really neutralize the astigmatism just beautifully. Fantastic case, it went beautifully, and I'm so proud to say that I did a beautiful surgery for this young patient. Thank you guys for watching.